Commentary, it helps us understand our great game. But there's some commentary that's rarely heard. The commentary inside the players' heads. In this series, we take you inside the demons' minds. The highs, the lows, and the psychological side of the game. This is the Melbourne Mindset, brought to you by IG. Good to see you, Track. You too. You've been an incredible athlete all your life, always in state teams, Australian squads. Have you always had doubts about your ability to perform or has that crept in in the last five or six years? Uh, no, every day you have doubts, yes. Is that right? Yeah, of course. I mean, as a competitor, you always question your ability and question, uh, you know, if, if I'm going to play well, almost like the, you know, the coulds, woulds, shoulds type things, you know, I should be playing well. You know, I should be dominating games and, um, you know, what happens if I don't play well? What happens if, um, you know, my teammates or whatever or, um, you know, the people I'm versing against, whatever they dominate? So there's always doubts. But um, for me, I've learned over the years that that's just natural. It's a natural feeling. You've got to sort of accept that. And um, it's almost like going into games knowing to have those doubts. It's almost like, well, if they're not there, then what the hell's going wrong? So almost having them is kind of a way of me performing. Yeah. Have you had them all of your life? Like if you think back to the under 10s or 12s, state football, were they there? Uh, probably not early on, because as a kid, you don't really know what the hell is going on. You sort of just play footy or play sport just to sort of, because your mates do it and your parents kind of put you in there. So, uh, no, nah, definitely not early on. Maybe when I was about 15, 16, when you sort of started to take a bit more serious, you started to make a few more uh, state teams and TSC Cup and stuff like that, and you think maybe I'm a crack at either playing footy or basketball, and that's sort of when the doubt comes in, um, when it starts to get a bit more expectation and pressure. But, um, yeah, ever since then, it's kind of, Go through ebbs and flows, you know, one week you're on a high, one week you're on a low, um, but that's just sort of the, the sport that we're in. And did it occur in both basketball and football equally? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Oh, I think anything I do, there's always doubts, whether it's the, the cooking stuff or um, anything, there's always, there's always doubt. I think that just shows that, you know, there's a level of care there, so yeah. So how do you overcome that? Have you had a lot of help with it and can you now control it? Uh, I don't think it's something you can control. I think it's definitely something um, you know, you've got to be more aware of and just understand, well, that's just thoughts coming through. I'm just going to accept that and move on type thing. Um, I've got a lot of help from um, a few psychologists that I've worked with over the past six or seven years. Um, yeah, and I think for me, it's a kind of understanding that like, these thoughts are normal. This is a normal human being feeling. Um, and this isn't something you should be scared of or shied away from. This is something that you kind of, you've got to embrace, understand that the position I'm in, the, the footballer I am, the person I am, and kind of uh, accepting it, using that feeling and um, using it as motivation. So how does it manifest within? What happens? Like this is, you watch golfers on the practice screen, they don't miss a putt. They walk out onto the first and they feel like someone's taken over their putter. What happens with you when you start to become anxious? Um, for me, when I start to become anxious, I lose my communication. Um, I get really insular. Um, so for me, I, my biggest cue when I play is trying to use my voice and direction. And that's always trying to get me in the present. Um, I always, whenever I'm anxious, I always focus on the past or the future. I never sort of am in the, in the present as it is, focusing in on the now. So for me, I always try and stay really present using my breath. I try and focus a lot on my breath um, as much as I can during the game. You're one of the best players the game has right now. You're always in the Brownlow conversation. You've won a best and fairest. You've been best on ground in a grand final with 39 possessions, the most ever in a grand final. You are at the elite level, but somehow the anxiety creeps in. It is incredible how it can affect you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so sort of, you imagine for the 450th best AFL player how life is. Well, the, no matter if you've played one game or played 500 games, there's always doubt and always expectation and pressure and internally more than externally. I think a, a competitors always put themselves, um, they, always, they always want to exceed more than they actually should, if that makes sense. They yeah. never kind of, I'm never satisfied with what, I, what I've done. Like I've yeah, obviously won a Norm Smith and a premiership and the best and fairest, but the, the mindset of a competitor is, well, I want to win three best and fairest and I want to win three premierships and, you know, I want to be a 10-time All-Australian. But I think, um, you know, sometimes you've got to actually sit back and kind of smell the roses a bit and actually sort of 
in a non-arrogant way, but appreciate what you've actually done because um, then that kind of makes you feel real grateful for the position you're in. Um, but yeah, like I, you know, I remember my first game, I did my ACL in my first year and like that year was really tough on me with a lot of doubt, being a high draft pick. You know, will I be the player that I know I can be and the expectation of being number two and then coming to play my first game or you know, what happens if I do my ACL, the pressure of that. And um, So no matter what situation you're in, um, whether you playing footy or you're, um, you're not playing footy, there's, al there's always pressure. When you came back from the knee in 2016, were you apprehensive? Were you untrusting in your body? I've never done it. I've never had a serious injury like that before. So for me, um, the mindset of kind of like, of, of course, as soon as I make the AFL, I do my first ever serious injury and I'm out for 12 months. And you, know, you see so many stories in um, sport in general around the world of high draft picks and you know, a lot of talent, a lot of potential and their kind of uh, their, their, um, their career kind of goes downhill from injuries and sort of things that they can't control. So for me, I, that crept in so much. But um, I also got to realise, like I'm 19, and, and now I look back at it and go, "Geez, that was the best thing that's ever happened to me." Uh, and I've kind of had that mindset over the last four or five years, whether I have a bad game or a good game. That kind of you know everything happens for a reason type mindset. This situation will hold you in good stead for the future. I was reading Open by Agassi. And he talks about what is the most important point. And everyone's like, oh, the last point. Or like, no, the next point. It's hard to get yourself into that mentality where you push everything that has happened away because it's uncontrollable and just look at the next contest. You're 100% right. It's something that, as our game, there's footy in general, probably out of any other sport in the world, there's mistakes every single everywhere. second, everywhere. Um, you know, I'm not the most perfect kick. The game is... The, the position I play is always contested. There's always going to be people hanging on to me, tackling me. So I'm always going to be making mistakes. So for me, it's, it is really, as you said, moving on as quickly as you can, focusing on the next, the next one, focusing on where I am, what are my feet doing, using my cues throughout the game uh, to kind of get me in those positions. And I guess for me as well, not necessarily looking at the outcome, kind of looking, or the result, looking at like the actual process and the opportunities that I'm getting around it. Jordan talks about missing thousands of shots but the trick, and Federer speaks about losing lots of points, but it's winning the right ones. Yep, exactly right. Yeah, you're 100% right. I think for me, like, um, yeah, like there's, I, I have a lot of shots on goal and I have a lot of, um, I get a lot of possessions, but for me, I try and pride myself on being really impactful. And um, yeah, the way I play, there might be a few risks and a few turnovers, but um, I'll always go back to what I know best and that's kind of win the ball. and. Um, I'm never not going to put myself in those situations. That's just the player I am. You and I have spoken a little about this, but how did COVID and lockdown help you find calm? Yeah, we've spoken a fair bit about this off camera. Um, oh, for one, I, got, I, uh, I met the love of my life and Bella. That was the best thing about COVID for me. <laughs> I think if it wasn't for COVID, I probably wouldn't have happened. So uh, from that point of view, that was amazing. Um, we were, forced to, we were forced to live together. So we met in Feb, um, COVID started in March, um, and then we were kind of forced to um, live together. So um, you know, two months into our relationship, we're already living down the beach for two months together. And, um, and then from there, we um, obviously moved up to Maroochydore in the hub and we were there for four months. And we kind of said to each other, it was either make or break. And um, fortunate, well, yeah, we're, we're nearly married now, which is good. So um, it's, it's going well. Uh, but I think being up in the hub, being around the beach, I love being in nature. I love being around nature. I love the beach. Uh, it kind of made me kind of settle down, relax, get off my phone more, try and switch off. And I got into a really good routine when I was up there. I, um, you know, I'd go for a walk in the morning. I'd do my mindfulness on the beach, listen to a little podcast. And um, I love Joe Dispenza and um, Eckhart Tolle and um, those types of guys who are, um, spiritual teachers, I guess, um, listen to them speak and do some mindfulness um, at the beach. And um, I guess it just really calmed me down and made me really present, um, focus on the things that I can control um, and worry about the things that I can control and not necessarily um, kind of understanding the things will come in and try and distract that, but just understanding that's part of what you do and um, kind of push, pushing that to the side and um, focusing on, on the present and what's at hand. Have you been able to maintain those habits that you learnt? Yeah, I have, definitely. That's the one thing that I think um, has definitely kept with me. Um, the tough thing about mindfulness and kind of doing any mental, um, any mental training is that, you know, with physical, if you do a bicep curl or a chest a bench press, you see the results in a month or you could see some sort of results where with, with the mental side of things, it's something that you've got to do 
every day ongoing. It's something you can't sort of stop after a week or two and think that you've just nailed it. Um, so for me, I try and do as much as I can. I try and mind, uh, do mindfulness every day or do some sort of meditation or even if I don't have the time, you know, just getting off my phone, being really present, um, if I'm in a conversation, listening to what they have to say, um, I get distracted quite easily. So from that point of view, trying to, trying to focus in what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, it's something that I think has helped my career more than I think the physical, to be honest. I feel like I've always been questioned my fitness and um, I guess, can I run out games? But you know, that's obviously matured as I've gotten older and gotten better. But I think the mental side of the game is the thing that I've tapped into the most. Ahead of the grand final in 21, how were you in terms of your mindset? Physically, you were in unbelievable shape. How did you make sure that when those two hours arrived, you were able to produce what you hoped for? Because there's 44 others hoping mm. to do the same. Yeah, I've, I've, it's quite funny. I, I've, I've always had a really strong confidence and belief in my game at the top level. And in high pressure games, I feel like my mindset and the way I play always stands out and stands up um, in big moments. I was really nervous for the game, um, but I never had doubt in that I could play or perform on those moments. I knew that I could, I can perform. I always have growing up in big games, basketball or football. I felt like I've always, when the pressure kind of has increased, I've always felt like I've gone to a new level. And um, yeah, I definitely felt that during the grand, or the, during the final series in general. And um, again, it was kind of like in, in the Perth hub, I was around my new, usual routine, being at the beach, waking up at 6.30 in the morning with Jake Lever and Tom Sparrow, Selwyn, a high performance guy. We'd all go down the beach together for 20 minutes, go for a swim. And I think for me, just having that routine going into the final series really helped me. Um, I guess as well, like, you know, in a, in a nice way, but there was no distractions over in, yeah. in Perth, you know. Um, didn't have to do much other than wake up, go to train, eat and sleep, um, and focus all my attention on the grand final um, or the final series in general. So from that point of view, it was really easy. Um, but yeah, there's, I mean, I was nervous. I don't think I was actually doubting myself. I was probably more doubting um, the doggies because they're a really good team um, and we um, they've had the wood over us for a few years so from that point of view I was more just hopefully we just get off to a good start and um, which we did. What about when things get rugged within the game are you able to maintain a level of sort of presentness and positivity how do you make sure that there isn't any panic? Um, well I feel like that that year in 2021 we did an amazing job of kind of um, you know, when the chips were down and we were kind of losing by a lot or, um, you know, the game wasn't going our way, we were able to sort of shift momentum really quickly. Um, you know, the Geelong game, the last game of the season, we were down by 40 points. I think the first nine games of the year, we were down by 20 points in each game or 12 points. So we were able to shift momentum really quickly off a couple of acts or, you know, heroic acts, whether it was Angus Brayshaw going back with the flight of the footy, little things like that to kind of give you a boost and a lift. And, I guess as well, my position, you know, being around the midfield, it is quite easy to um, keep yourself in the game because the ball's there. You can either make a tackle, win the ball, um, and do things that kind of a backman or a defend or a forward can't because the ball's, you know, where I am. So from that point of view, it was it is quite easy to kind of keep yourself engaged in the game. But I think as well, it's a grand final. You, you can't have that mindset of, geez, I hope oh, we're going to be losing here because then you, that's just what's going to happen. You've got to kind of think, as positive as you can, even though, you know, Bontempelli kicks that goal to put him up by 18. That's it's kind of thinking, oh God, like, um, you know, he's a great player, but, you know, we need to move on here. We need to reset, focus on what we can control. So you play one of the great games of all time in a grand final, leave as a premiership player. Has the little man become quieter as a result? <laughs> it's gotten worse, yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, well, of course it has. Because you want to be there all the time. Yeah, of course. That's... I feel like anyone would think that, yeah. I mean, when you win a premiership, geez, why don't we do, let's do that again. Like that is the best feeling in the world. Like, but you just, you realize when you're in footy that it is just, it is so hard to win. It is so hard to win in general. The game is so, becoming so even and you have to respect every opposition that you play. Um, you know, it is tough from that perspective. And I guess from my point of view, like the individual accolades, like. I'm a competitor, so I'm always wanting more and seeking more and understanding that like that's fine. Like you know, you put goals. I put goals out there each year and trying to achieve them. But um, understanding that like I'll only get to that if I focus on this part. So having that there in the back of your mind, 
but focusing purely on um, you know, day-to-day -day process, what am I doing right now that can kind of help me get closer to that goal? Last one is pretty serious. If you're gonna make the ultimate meal, <laughs> do you feel more pressure there before you post or going out for Friday night footy? I actually think in the moment it's what I put oh, up my God. social media. <laughs> well, it's funny because I, uh, yeah, this all, like I love cooking, so, um, yeah, it's actually quite funny. I actually think I get more nervous of posting about my social <laughs> What's the feedback going to be? What's the feedback going to be like? Uh, well, for one point, like for a point of view, I'm not, a, I'm not a chef, so I'm not a good cook. Like, my culinary skills are terrible. Like, I chop my fingers all the freaking time. They're not great. Is that why you're fumbling? Pardon? Is that why you're fumbling? <laughs> um, so I caught feedback on that, but I just laugh it off because I'm like, well, I don't, they, can, they can give me feedback because I'm not a good cook, but um, I love it. I absolutely love it. I think it's more, it's not necessarily the cooking point of view. I think it's more, as I said before, the health and wellness. Yeah. Um, What's well, a release for you, isn't it? It is, and, and I say this every time I um, speak about this and I get asked about the cooking stuff and my socials, and um, I always bring it back to this, and I'll say it every single time, is you know, growing up, huge Scott Pendlebury fan, as you know, Collingwood fan, um, the only way I could meet Scott Pendlebury was at a family day or on YouTube where I'd look up Scott Pendlebury highlights uh, or go to a game. Um, where now, the, I think social media has its negatives and it has its positives, but I, you know, I think it's what you kind of shift your attention to. And yeah. For me, being able to sort of show fans or show Melbourne fans or young kids what I do on a daily basis, how I, pre how I prepare, how I eat, how I train, um, hopefully gives a bit of an insight into an AFL athlete. But the same thing for me, like I follow Scott or I follow LeBron James or a, you know, a Russell Westbrook or whatever and I see what they do on a daily basis and I see how Mark, uh, LeBron James spends over a million bucks a year on his, on his body and how much he prepares like that and he's, what is he, 40 years old next year and he's, he's been in the league for 21 years. So, so little things like that, that's what I love social media for. Um, yeah, there's a lot of negatives, I cop a lot of crap for it. I don't really care. That's just what that's what comes when you when you uh, you're playing footy and you're kind of in the limelight a bit. As I read the other day, what other people think of me is none of my business. That's the way to play it. Well, I wish I could just install that into my brain. <laughs> just oh, we'll, we'll try. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but back to your question, the ultimate ultimate meal I'd make. I love seafood. I love pasta. So a a nice seafood linguine. Would you like that? I'm coming around. <laughs> Beautiful. Love speaking to you. <laughs> Thanks, great man. Thank you. The cook and the player, Christian Petrarca. Interesting to hear how Track has been able to get it done on the biggest stages of all, despite his own self-doubts and internal battles. So it's conquering the noises above the shoulders that leads to great outcomes, as true for players as it is for traders. So whether it's in the markets or on the field, mastering your mindset is vital to helping you perform at your best. For Melbourne's official trading partner, IG, this is the Melbourne Mindset.